Okay, record. All right, Sam Colby, again, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me. And how excited are you for the North American release of Ganymede? Gosh, it's so surreal. We're really yeah. thrilled. It's been a, a very long labor of love that we've worked every step to get to, and it feels like such an incredible, relieving milestone to be at getting out there into the world. Yeah, I bet. yeah this one's uh, starting to be birthed like right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had cast one actor, and then the pandemic hit. And of course. So it's, it's been a it's been a slow burn on this one, so we're excited. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, this film is part horror, part coming, coming of age, and examines the experiences that many uh, queer people face during their formative years. So what inspired you to create this story? You know, I think, uh, as I was saying, we started working on this in 2019, right before the pandemic hit. And, you know, at that time, and I think it's escalated even further, but at that time, I started noticing that the rhetoric around the LGBTQ community, our community, um, was getting more and more extreme and it was starting to take on a sort of religious tone yeah. um you know it, they're talking about it being demonic and you know we're trying to bring others into the lifestyle and it just had this very um just like old world feel to it and i started thinking like okay what if you are like growing up in a household where this is the ideology you yeah. know like if, if you perceived your own homosexuality or queerness as an evil entity that was afflicting you and your family, like what would that do to your psyche? And like, how, how would that manifest in your life? Mm -hmm. Exactly, definitely. And Colby, you primarily wrote the script? Yes, that's right. I mean, uh, Sam and I work together on all our projects. So like he knows what it's gonna be and we're talking about it throughout the entire process, but it's me who sits down and you <laughs> know, puts, the paper. puts the pen to paper. paper. Awesome. And so, but, and you both had a hand in directing the film. So do you feel like both of your visions have been portrayed? Definitely. Yeah. It's funny because one thing that's really helpful with the two of us is that our, um, our passions kind of uh, go in the yin and yang world of the film. He kind of goes into uh, more of the writing and actor passion. And I go more into the camera and editing passion. Um, and we meet in the middle with our vision. And it's helpful that you know, I can talk really in depth with the cinematographer as he's going to cover something that maybe um, we're both not able to cover at that moment with the actor. And that's a really nice thing that we're able to kind of like talk throughout the process of pre-production and just in general of, of uh, living together. We're married. So yeah. like, we're talking about these projects all the time. We're, we literally live with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when we're activating with the vision, it's very much a, an aligned intention, which is really helpful, you know? Yeah, definitely. And Ganymede was filmed in Colby, uh, your hometown of Paducah, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So what was. Was the, what was the decision behind that? Um, well, one of the things is that when you shoot in your hometown, you can like call in a lot of favors, um, <laughs> which is which is wonderful. And uh, the other thing is that Kentucky has a very um, competitive um, tax incentive as well. Okay. And so that was something that we wanted to utilize. And, you know, I felt good about uh bringing money from our production back into my hometown and supporting my community. And um, so, yeah, that, that was, that's why we decided Kentucky. Yeah. And also in just a creative aspect, it's a perfect setting it's a for, beautiful place. Uh, for a yeah. Southern Gothic. Yeah. Um, the architecture is wonderful. We shot during the summer. So everything was just like lush mm -hmm. and green and beautiful and gives it that like hot sticky atmosphere. Yeah. Yes, yes. I've driven through Paducah many times. I, I'm from the St. Louis area. So and oh, I'm, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very fun. familiar with Paducah. <laughs> I'm a okay. producer, uh, him and his partner, or him and his husband also live, uh, his family lives up in St. Louis. So they drive to St. Louis all the time from Savannah. So mm -hmm. yeah, Paducah was on their ra radar as well. 100%. Very nice. Awesome. Um, yeah, and, and Kobe, what was it like growing up in, Paduc in Paducah? Did you kind of have some elements that you, uh, from your own personal life that you put into this uh, film? Yeah, there was there was some. Um, you know, Paducah is is a wonderful place. It's a very artsy town. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, but it's it's sort of a, a, a there's a rural area around it. It is in the south, and so obviously growing up gay there, you meet some challenges. You know, at church or at school, but. I was blessed to have very wonderful, accepting, loving parents and okay. was able to come out in high school. Um, and so I kind of brushed up against the the world that, you know, little Lee lives in. Mm -hmm. um, it could have been my life. You know, my, my dad left a very extreme religion before I was born. But, I, you know, I think a lot about had he not had the courage to leave or um, had just not been the person that he is you know, that that could have been my experience. You know, I could have been living in a house with that ideology. 
And um, luckily I was not. And um, so it lost the thread there. Well, uh, funny enough, though, know, one thing I was thinking while you're saying that is um, we almost had, we had a really great opportunity to revisit um, the environment of Paducah right before we filmed because um, we lived in LA for five years um, right before the pandemic. And when the pandemic um, happened, we had already been considering moving elsewhere. And so we uh, were considering moving back to Chicago, which is where we were before mm -hmm. LA. Um, but we took about nine months, give or take, in back in Paducah to kind of reassess where we were going to go next. Um, and in that time, we really this was in the middle of the 2020 summer. So you're seeing the election unfolding. You're seeing all of this, all sorts of d division of ideologies unfolding. And it really and I had never lived in anywhere outside of uh, a city uh, after the age of 18. So suddenly living as an openly gay Mexican person in this southern region, I think, was really building a new identity, and it was building a new identity for you of what the city, what what the region was, and ourselves um, over that summer. Well, you know, in in rural areas uh, and the south, you know, the divisions in our country are playing out in a little bit of a starker contrast. You know, like uh, we live right next door to each other. You know, and I, I think the film tries to exemplify that. You know, that that 2020 summer, I remember June rolled around, and it was like Pride flag. We're going down the street, Pride flag, yeah. Trump flag pride flag don't mm -hmm. tread on me flag so, and sure. so it's like i started thinking like we are literally coexisting right next to each other and i think it really influenced the way that we put this film together having yeah. that experience yeah 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 awesome fantastic and getting me uh, made its world premiere at the 41st really international film festival then played at a couple other festivals how has the audience response been gosh that was so surreal to see it for the first time in that audience mm -hmm. because um we live in chicago and um the 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 theater was packed like it was we were weren't sure if there was gonna be five people there or 100 people there um and half of it was people we know knew and the other half were really attendees it seemed so or or a little bit of both and so it was really nerve-wracking to be like okay are people gonna get this are people gonna be able to get down with the tone of this yeah um and i think that was our first moment where we actually saw certain things that we often had to fight to fight for to be like no it's we really feel like people are gonna get this um, actually play out uh, hook, line, and sinker, and we were really relieved. Um, I think things like Neil, that was uh, the brother of Floyd, that was a type of character you're like, are some people were like, are people going to get this? Are people going to appreciate this? Is this going to feel over the top? And we felt really certain about it. Um, and then we were really glad that that was a moment in that screening where people were reacting exactly what we wanted. And in fact, when he's yelling, you're in hell girl, people are like applauding. And we were like, okay, this actually, I think people are getting what we were trying to do here, um, which was just something really special to see. And something that's been interesting too, is seeing it because uh, we played at uh, Reeling, which is a queer festival. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, last month we played at um, Chattanooga, which is a horror festival. Okay. And so I was thinking like, how are these two crowds that are different demographics like going to yeah. react? And what was strange is they kind of reacted the same way. Like they were <laughs> hitting the same moments and I just was ready for it to be just a different reaction and it wasn't. And so I, I don't really know what to make of that, but uh, yeah, it was an observation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, it seems that the LGBTQ plus community really resonates with the horror genre in general. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, because a lot of people who have talked to you about this, they talk about the whole aspect of being outsiders that they really see themselves in that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would could imagine you kind of get the same response there, you know? I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think um, something we've realized is that there, there really is kind of a hunger for queer horror. Mm -hmm. And uh, horror is very queer, just in general, it's subversive, like you're suggesting, it's, um, yeah. you know, about the outsider. Um, but I do think the audiences want to see something more directly queer, you know, I think we have to filter our stories through so much metaphor sometimes, yeah. that like, to see it actually happening i think is um people want that yeah we yeah. feel lucky for a moment where that can happen mm -hmm, for sure and what is the significance behind the title uh, ganymede yeah so ganymede it's a term i came across when um i started researching a project that i ultimately did not write but <laughs> it was about um in the 16 and 1700s uh molly houses in london which were like the equivalent of a gay bar okay um, and so I kept coming across this term Ganymede and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and they were using it to kind of denote a kind of like foppish, young, feminine, attractive male who was very like enticing to others, maybe was like a flirt. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
it actually it it comes from Greek mythology, but I won't go into that because it would derail this conversation. <laughs> um, but uh, I started thinking, okay, what if this was used in sort of a religious context? What if I imagined that it survived through Christian theology, through like Hellenic Christians who would have come in contact with like the Greek mythology of it mm -hmm. and the connotation that, um, you know, in the in the 16 and 1700s, there was actually kind of a renaissance of Ganymede as like um, uh, tying it to like queer people. Um, but so there, there's all this stuff wrapped up in it, but it, it comes from, you know, 16th and 17th hundreds uh gay slang yeah gotcha. they really i guess i didn't realize that gay slang kind of went that far back you know <laughs> it is oh, wild yeah. in fact like while you would you around the time you just finished writing the script we um ended up going to new orleans uh for a week for uh, their film festival there and we were walking we went to the lgbt center that was in the quarter there and they had a timeline of different places and names of them. And Ganymede was showing up a lot in some of their titles of places from even the 1900s. And we we're like, this is clearly something that has echoed throughout queer identity in some yeah. sort of uh, well, new for, tradition. Yeah, literally for thousands of years. And, and as um, you know, the context around queer people changes in society, the context around Ganymede and its myth mythology changes in society. And it's funny how you can kind of view how people are talking about the myth. Um, in the context of like, you, you can tell what era you're in, you know, they, they view it through their own lens and what um, queerness is to them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, for sure. And Ganymede has a stellar cast that includes Jordan Dow, Pablo Casablanco, David Kochner, and Robin Lively. What was it like working with these actors and what made them perfect for their role, the roles? Gosh, they were all so incredible and really wonderfully nice people. I think that the vibe that every single person brought to the set really helped charge it into a positive creative flow. Um, we were really lucky to have an, an amazing casting director named Matthew Glasner, um, who our producer Stephen Stanley brought on very early on. Um, and he helped us collaborate with who could be the ideal people for this these roles. And um, Jordan and Pablo were, were brought to us by Matthew mm -hmm. and we were just so stunned by their by the work they had done and um, the chemistries that they had that we just were like, this is how could we not say yes to these people yeah. together? And it was just really uh, an organic, easy dynamic working with them. They worked really hard together to build this chemistry and friendship. They really built a solid friendship prior to the film to, and that really showed the connection that they had. Um, and I just always really enjoyed watching the way that you would work with all the other actors as well. If yeah. I was working on camera, you always came in with the script and had a really good talk with them about what. Yeah, was I mean, doing. what's so wonderful about um, this cast is that like we we chose these actors because they're all extremely grounded. You mm -hmm. know, we trusted these roles in their hands that they weren't going to go like over the top or crazy with them because it really is a piece that you can't wink at the audience at all. Yeah. Um, you know, the, these are real people. You have to play them as that. And I think it speaks to like um, that the issues that are confronted, some people may feel that like we're past this, you know, is this mm -hmm. is coming out really that hard anymore? And yeah. I'm going to tell you that in some places it really is. Yeah. Oh, and sure. um, we needed them to play this real and to um, respect that this is some people's reality. Definitely. And I think they all did a wonderful job at that. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, what's next with Ganymede? You know, it's it's releasing on the 6th officially. Um, actually, I mean, by the time that this is out there, um, the premiere will probably already happen. We're doing a digital premiere tonight with Kino, who is really excited about championing this queer horror film. And VMI is our distributor for the North American release. Um, so it'll be out on VOD um, th on the 6th. And then it'll eventually also end up on streaming one day. And we are really excited about the fact that it's taking that release and putting it out into the world, especially at this time as we're entering another election mm -hmm. um, and already knee deep in all sorts of wildness with it. And also going into Halloween season with this being an opportunity to, for people to watch a queer horror film. Yeah. Um, and so we're really excited about it coming out there um, into the world at this time. Awesome. How can one stay up to date with the film? Uh, follow us at, at Ganymede underscore movie. That's our Instagram account. And we'll be posting all things Ganymede there. So you can keep up with, you know, what's going on with it um, at that account. Yeah. Right, perfect. And are you both on social media as well? Yeah. Yes. I'm at Sam Probst, S-A-M-P-R-O-B-S-T. And I am at Colby Say Cheese, please. Colby, <laughs> C-O-L-B-Y. 
Love it. Love it. Well, then before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you would like to mention or plug at this time? You know, we're just kind of knee deep in some Colby has got um, has been doing some writing and we're really excited about what's coming out there next. I think we will say that that there's some stuff being cooked up and uh, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else you'd want to say about it? No, I don't think so. I mean, more to come. Ganymede is going to get out there and then, um, you know, we'll know what our next move is. But yeah, we got some scripts written and ready to go and in the pipeline. So you'll yeah. see more from us for sure. Yeah. And it'll have elements of being gay always. That is for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Fantastic.